name of Allah, the most beloved, and the most beloved. Assalamu alaikum. Our today's topic in research natural and linguistics, our today's topic that we will discuss is quantitative, qualitative, or both combining method in linguistics. So, in the last lecture, we have discussed about the qualitative and quantitative, the basic principles, or we have discussed these paradigms in this concept. In the different subculture classification of the our last lecture. So uh, today we will discuss qualitative and quantitative or combining those two paradigms in one particular study. So let's move on. There is an increasing uh, tendency by the researchers that they are applying or they are using both qualitative and quantitative research paradigms in one particular mode of study. Different projects and different researches are being performed in social linguistics or in social sciences. They are using both qualitative and quantitative rather than focusing on just one research paradigm, just qualitative or just quantitative. No. Now this trend is, is increasing day by day. And why they are using those two research paradigms in one particular mode of study, why they are combining the two research paradigms, qualitative and quantitative, and what is the usage of uh, these uh, two mixing these two research paradigms we will discuss one by one so of course there are some advantages some there are some benefits <coughs> to combining those two these two paradigms qualitative and quantitative in social sciences and humanities and in social linguistic fields by the research methodology we we can see the examples so there are advantages what are those advantages <clears throat> in fact there's a lot of work in the applied linguistic and social linguistic field on the value of combining either direct or indirect data gathering methods or applying diverse techniques for data analysis so, some influential uh, earlier work of Green et al. reviewed studies taking a mixed method approach and argued that combining the two paradigms is beneficial. Why it's beneficial? Uh, for constructing comprehensive accounts, a detailed account about a particular phenomenon. And it also provides answers to a wider range of research questions. So if uh, we are focusing on just one research paradigm, we are collecting just qualitative data collection, we are applying just qualitative data analysis tool or data collection tools and just <coughs> relying on one research paradigm. So we will not be able to get answers to a wider range of research questions. We will not, what we can say, we will not be able to investigate uh, in-depth study or we will not be able to find out the answers of our research questions in a wider range. So if we apply both qualitative and quantitative research paradigm in one particular model study, we, we are able to get more in-depth data about the particular phenomena, about our topic, our, about our title that we have selected, or, and but the research questions we have formulated for this research, particular uh, study, we will we, we'll be able to have uh, greater detailed answers of our research process. Hashkri and Tadlai, they suggest in their work that it is the only way to combining the research methodologies, two research methodologies, qualitative and quantitative, or using MM or mixed method approach. We are able to get ways to answer research questions and a different ways to get answers of our not be able answers in any other way. 
And research in sociology linguistic has shown that combined methodologies can shed light on different layers of meaning. What does it mean? Different layers of meaning. Meaning, we are using qualitative data analysis, or we are using interview techniques in our research. So we will be able to get some directions of the participants, uh, some directions uh, about the particular phenomena, about our topic by the participants. But if we combine another survey also, we are using, uh, we are collecting information by the survey from our participants. So another layer of meaning will be interpreted. It means from interview, from so two layers of different directions of the phenomena, above the phenomena, we will be able to get. So in this way, if we are using uh, interview techniques, we are using survey research, or we are combining quantitative, we are using observation method or observation technique, we are collecting data from different, uh, in different dimensions, and we are able to get a more and focused uh, of the, that particular phenomenon. Here you can see the diagram of three uh, mixing three approaches, quality, quantity, and mixed method approach. From the left side, you can see A, B circle. In the circle, A or B dimension, you can see over there is a qualitative. And from the right side, D, E in the circle, you can see it's a quantitative. And between these two paradigms, between uh, again, a third circle that is combining these two paradigms, is the B, C, G, and the B part of the quality and G part of the quantity or C part is that is in this circle we can see. So when we combine quality and quantity, it becomes mixed method approach. And from where I took this image or figure, uh, you can see the title page of this book, Foundation of Mixed Method Research. If you want to study uh, in greater detail, you can uh, consult this book. It's written by Ted Lai and Tashkri, and it's very info informative books. And here are a lot of examples you can see over there, a lot of uh, examples of mixed method approach or many, many mixed method approach designs you can see over there. And another purpose to fix this title page here in this slide, one of our university teachers used to say that if there is a book fair, you must visit that book fair, never miss the chance to visiting that book fair. It's if there is a surrounding you or nearby you, you have a chance, you must visit that book fair any cost. Because if you, no matter you are buying a book or no, because when you visit that book, you will see the title page of the book. You will see the cover page, covering, uh, covering of the books. You will see a plenty of books over there. You will see uh, what we can say. You will touching the book. You will touch the books. You will uh, open the books, read the book, read the content. A lot of things, a lot of activities you will do over there while playing with the books. And uh, th these are the many, many advantages to visiting the book fair. So if hey, we can see here is not a book fair, but uh, I want to show you that the title page, you can see that the title page is very inspiring and very uh, fascinating to me, it seems to me. So I wanted to show you. So if you want to greater in-depth study related to mixed method approach, consult this book. There is a great variety in mixed method designs as uh, I have shown you the title page of the book, uh, Foundation of the Mixed Method Research Designs, written by Thashkri and Ted Lai, and you can find over there more than 40 types of research design, mixed method research design. Mixed methods is not to be mistaken for an anything goes disposition. It's not just researchers' willingness or it's not just research, a researcher wants to add something or it's to be additive 
quantitatively there must be some sort of um, things that can you can quantify them there's many 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 research methods and research paradigms have been used in a particular studies by a researcher so it doesn't mean that if we are applying mixed method research mixed method of approach it doesn't mean that just we want to it depends upon different many other variables or many other factors we are mixing these two research paradigms because we have the some nature of our topic is the as the demand of our topic is we have to combine we have to use two research paradigm or it depends upon the research questions what sort of research questions we have formulated and what sort of answers we need to, for, to formulate those research questions what sort of answers we need we required so that's why we use two research paradigms in one particular study or we combine those two research paradigms or mix the research paradigms there is a growing consensus that combining approach is not only feasible but also beneficial in revealing different aspects of reality so it's also helpful we have greater in-depth or in-depth information we have information with greater detail we have uh, in a better way to get answers of our research questions so it's uh, beneficial definitely it's a beneficial and there is an open question as to whether many methods and types of research would comfortably sit under the same design so it's uh, feasible or it's a beneficial advantageous so the next question arise over there whether all types of research studies demand mixed method research or there is a particular type of research study in which we combine these two things these two paradigms these two research methods so the question then is not whether the two sorts of data and associated methods can be linked during study design or but whether it should be done how it will be done and for what purposes it will be done Holmes and Myrov uh, suggest that uh, there is a growing number of researchers which have consistently argued for an indeed adopted approach with, which attempt to integrate quantitative and qualitative methods of analysis using the patterns identified by the quantitative analysis as essential background to assist in the detailed qualitative interpretation of the discourse. Next point that we need to discuss related to this mixed method approach combining or integrating. So, is there any difference between combining or integrating or any other issue that is involved in this uh, main uh, element? So recently, the mixed method paradigm was defined as a class of research where the researcher mixes or combines. We use the word alternate word mixes or combine but not integrate integrate is a different terminology that we need to discuss so our researcher commits the combined quantitative and qualitative elements according to Bryman the key issue to be considered is the amount of integration of the two paradigms how much they are integrated how much they are interrelated how how much they are correlate to get the answers of the research questions or to get the in-depth uh, in understanding or in-depth information about a particular phenomena so we need to the point about this integration typically the discussion on the integration refers to the sequence and importance so when we need when we are using this term integration we are not using the word just combining or adding up or some mixing so integrate integrate to integrate the two different research paradigms we need to understand the point that uh, how much is important to combine quantitative data with the qualitative data or 
sequence wise what we need to uh, arrange whether we need to focus our research on quantitative data collection and data analysis tools or whether we have to emphasize or whether we have to prioritize qualitative data collection and data analysis tool so it means when we are talking about the integration integration means logically sequence wise or importance wise we need to be very careful about the combining or mixing two research paradigm so brennan usually provides the example of study showing how the second either qualitative or quantitative component can be introduced at a design the fieldwork or the interpretation and contextualization phase of any research project so we need to understand being a researcher what will be prioritized what will be what we can say what will be the most important uh, research paradigm that we need to discuss before early and in the start of our research or in the introduction of our research and what we need to get as a support and a supporting research paradigm to uh, maximize the validity and reliability of our research so whether combining or integrating quantitative qualitative elements mixed method design arguably contribute to a better understanding of the various phenomena under investigation so while quantitative research is useful towards generalizing research findings qualitative research researches are particularly valuable in providing in-depth rich data so we collect we have collected being a researcher we have collected a quantitative research or survey research we have done a survey research we have collected the questionnaire where we have collected the question from 500 participants so it means we can now generalize we can apply those findings those findings of our own research to other some different settings so if we are talking about the generalizability it means quantitative research is more authentic or when we want to in-depth understanding or we want to get more and more rich data it means we need to collect a qualitative data also or qualitatively we need to consider our research and person just a relatively mixed method approach and they say that uh, if there are two types of research questions it could be a mixed method research um, means it's a qualitative and quantitative approaches and are involved in the formulation of research questions it means we have combined being a researcher we have combined this, uh, two research paradigms another way the manner in which the research questions are developed or participatory or versus pre-planned participatory means it's a qualitative type we will we will formulate the research questions or theories time to time as we will go ahead in the research and we will uh, on the getting information on the basis of uh, gotten information we will formulate we will modify the research questions or theories and pre-plan pre-plan means quantitatively so in the manner in which we are going to investigate our research questions participatory versus pre-plan next it could also be a mixed method research if there are two types of sampling procedure probability sampling or probability sampling probability sampling means that there are probable chances or maximum chances or every participant has maximum chance to be selected for the particular study means or every students or every participants every subject has equal chance to be selected for this but particular study <clears throat> or purposive sampling purposive sampling is a non probability sampling that we have selected just on the convenience of the researcher or on the convenience convenience of the availability <clears throat> of the 
participants so probability sampling and non probability sam sampling if we are combining two types of sampling it means we are going to conduct x method approach right then another uh, assumption could be of mixed method research two types of data collection procedure focus group and surveys we mainly or majorly we just know this type of mixed method is that just data collection procedures if we combine qualitative and quantitative data collection procedure or data analysis procedure we think that now we are combining we are doing mixed method research however if we are combine other things for example sampling for example formulation of the research questions on the basis of two research paradigm or research questions our research questions tell us that now we it's a qualitative and quantitative mixed method approach it could also be a mixed method research another <coughs> two types of data as we have discussed <clears throat> that data collection procedure it depends upon the data collection procedure how in what way we have collected our data so it's a survey it will be a narrative numerical or it's a focus group it's an interview it's an observation it will be a textual so in this is also uh, mainly is considered the mixed method research by the uh general view that we just data collection procedure and data analysis procedure it's a combine of a qualitative and quantitative we thought that it's a mixed method research so <clears throat> two types of data analysis statistical and theoretical it's also a mixed method research in other way two types of conclusion as we have uh, selected mixed method research paradigm we have formulated research questions in the way that indicate that it's a qualitative and quantitative research and we have done uh, two types of data collection procedure two types of data analysis procedure two types of you know, all these things uh, like sampling or data collection analysis procedure or uh, data analysis uh, <coughs> statistical or thematical the qualitative and quantitative so it means our conclusion must be based on two types objective type and subjective type objective type the result findings that we have collected from the questionnaire from the survey research it could be uh, come in the category of objective type conclusion and then there is a subjective type so be careful if you are doing mixed method research and you have combined two data collection procedures qualitative and quantitative there must be indication in your conclusion also that you are giving two types of conclusions subjective type and subjective one paragraph related to objective type one paragraph must be related to subjective type Next, mixed method research design does not indicate necessarily better research. We are, a, what we can say, that we have collected two types of research. To, we have uh, done integration, the process of integration, or we have done the process of combination of two research paradigm. So it doesn't mean that we have done a better research. Uh, just qualitative research could also be a better research if we have done the research with all its pros and cons and basic uh, or uh, prerequisites we have fulfilled the prerequisites of a basic research it could also be a best research result research or better result and if we are conducting a quantitative uh, research uh, here I want to give you an example of my PhD research. Uh, I was going to investigate through an experiment. I was going to investigate the effect of phonetic videos on pronunciation of English language learners at secondary school level in Pakistan for my topic. So I wanted to do experiment, but. Uh, with the process when I was going to defend my three chapters but starting three chapters on the uh, defense day I just mentioned that it will be a mixed method research so one of my external examiner oh sorry no in defense in our defense there are just internal examiner on viva session there are some external examiner so on my defense, defense we are going to defend our proposal for three chapters of our 
thesis uh, for our research. So on the defense day, one of my internal examiner, she said that on in the one way you are saying you are going to perform an experiment, a pure qu quantitative research. In the other way, you are saying it will be a mixed method research. So there's a no combination of these two things. If you are going to perform a quantitative research, it will be a pure quantitative research. It will be an experimental research. So no need to combine two research paradigms. So no need to conduct an interview. No need to mix or integrate qualitative research with the quantitative research. In this way also, your research, research, research will be better. Just what we need to do. We need to be very careful. We need to be very, very conscious in the process of data collection and data analysis. So it doesn't mean that combining the two research paradigms necessarily it will be a better result or best result. Or we cannot say that use ex machina to combining a result sorry, to combining two research, research paradigms, it doesn't mean we have solution of all our problems or we have magical solution of all, all our research problems. It doesn't mean that. However, it's a, a integration. It's a, what we can see is a beneficial, advantageous, and we can satisfy our examiner if it is required according to the nature of your study. If it is necessary according to the nature of your topic and your own research plan. So it's a however the case that when consistent mixed method research allows for diversity of views and stronger inferences and as such it's often associated with the concept of triangulation. Another term, another element that we need to discuss right now, it's a triangulation. When we combine two different things, it, uh, it's called triangulation. So what triangulation actually is, we will discuss right now. Triangulation and overuse term. Every other researcher is going to use this term, triangulation. I have used the triangulation research paradigm and I have combined two different methods or three different methods. Triangulation as a central methodological concept comes high on the list of key features of good research design. And the way the term is conceptualized by scholars, however, epistemologically varied. Denzin's earlier work indicated that there is more than one type of triangulation, right? As we have discussed, the combining or mixed method is such there are but different assumptions combining two data collection procedure, combining two data analysis procedure, combining two sampling procedure, combining two different conclusion procedure. So triangulation is also what we can say different subtypes of triangulation. So data triangulation. So it means the application of more than one sampling method for data collection. So and what we can say is sampling means when we are going to select our uh, participants we are doing, we are involved in the process of sampling or when we are going to select our particular procedure or procedure or plan we are going to in this way we are also in the sampling procedure investigator triangulation and involvement of more than one researcher this like co-author they are perform uh, they are in the process of performing uh, one single research so co-author is investigator triangulation Next, there is a theoretical triangulation to use more than one theory or theoretical stance. And methodological triangulation, the use of more than one methodology. So we mostly be familiar with this methodological triangulation. Even we don't know about this data triangulation, about the sampling procedure. It's also called triangulation. 
triangulation is mean sampling uh, when we talk about sampling sampling is uh, done it, uh, yeah but we can say at two stages sampling is done or three stages sampling is done first we need to select our uh, schools suppose here yeah, we are investigating a problem that is related to school or students so first we have to need uh, our some we have to involve in the sampling process related to schools then uh, we are involved in the process of uh, sampling related to students or participants and such sort of things so these are the four uh, what we can say ascensions or subclassification of triangulation Data triangulation and methodological triangulation are arguably most common operationalized of the sum as we have discussed earlier. The former refers to the uh, data gathering methods while the later is further the refers to the use of more than one methodology in a research design. Denzel also drew an interesting distinction between intermethod and intramethod triangulation. The former means intermethod triangulation means the use of facets of the same method. For example, qualitative data, qualitative research paradigm, or what we can say in triangulation, we will use observation and interview or focus group, uh, what we can say in a quantitative research. The later, the intra-method triangulation, it means often uh, contrasting methods. For example, one is related to qualitative and one is related to quantitative methods. Triangulation is often one of the key reasons for undertaking mixed method research. It means when we are talking about mixed method research, it means we are talking about triangulation. Or if we are talking about triangulation, it means we are considering this mixed method approach in our research. So the, the question, however, is that what triangulation means in this context? The use of the term is not consistent among researchers. So we need to understand, we need to interpret what triangulation will be in our research, in our context. So according to the view, according to this view of triangulation, the expectation is that different data sets of different methodologies will lead to similar results and hence allow for confident interpretation of findings and strengthen the researcher's conclusion. So as such, the term is also widely associated with the concept of credibility of research findings or authenticity of the research finding. So triangulation means applying different methodologies. It means when we have finding, when we have conclusion of our research, our finding must be same what we have formulated uh, research questions and what we have answers of those research questions, those answers will be similar in quantitative data and in qualitative data. It means triangulation. A problem associated with this approach is the assumption that the data collected using different methods can necessarily be compared or contrasted in order to answer the same set of research questions. Tajpuri and Ted Dai, they say that over the years, triangulation has become a veritable and magical word. Every other researcher is going to apply the art method of triangulation in his research, in his or her research. So the concept need to be reconsidered and most of the time it is criticized by the researcher for being used so much use of this triangulation method in the researches and uh, this needs to be investigated this needs to be reconsidered whether really it's a logical value it, has, it is having a logical value to use in all researches this method of triangulation Preswell et al they explain that triangulation does lead to a better understanding of complex research questions and environment, for example. Dornay suggests that a better understanding of phenomena can emerge from triangulated findings, and so also reports on the value of mixed method designs for classroom research where challenges may be addressed through 
versatile design by applying different research design or methods results would be better however apart from contributing to more interactive of research questions it means when we apply a mixed method or we apply the triangulation process means we have some in-depth analysis or in-depth understanding of particular phenomena mixed method research also has an important part to play in reaching diverse audiences different types of audiences that we have or different types of participants we have in our research for example being performed uh, quantitative research we have done uh, 200 or 300 or most of the cases we can also co collect 500 participants to perform a survey so if we are using another technique or qualitative technique focus group or interview or observation so we will be able to a lot of more audience many many more audience we will uh, have to be able to encounter so another uh, advantage or another what we can say importance we can understand in this way by applying mixed method research we have a large audience we have a large list of our audience and overcoming challenges associated with certain research settings and if there are large number of audience we are able to get more and more data and we are able to get more understanding of the particular phenomena so for example Molyneux shows how mixing methods and uh, what we can say contributed to wider dissemination of the findings in the form of written reports for the company involved so we have different chance or we have different segregation of the information when we collect them when we analyze them when we get findings we have better results so mixed methods are gaining momentum or are gaining a lot of uh, what we can say importance there's a need for this third paradigm to find its place in graduate programs and research methods curricula so this would all involve not only creating the context where issues of the researchers inclinations affiliations accountability are discussed but also equipping novice researchers with the necessary knowledge and skills for understanding mixed method research in which requires competencies in both quantitative and qualitative research so we need to what we can say make expert we need to prepare an expert team of the mixed method research design using a wide range of tools for data collection and combining quantitative and qualitative research paradigms can provide rich database sets and enhance our understanding of complexities in most research areas in the linguistics and in general or what we can say in general uh, speaking or talking in this way we can say we can get better understanding 